Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I am so excited to welcome Nikki. Thank you. Is that okay if I call you that? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes I okay. think I'm in trouble if you use my full name. So it's probably <laughs> <best>. <laughs> me too. It's like, where's my mother? <laughs> uh huh. It's like Nicole Marie, if that's for, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My kids know that too. If it's the first name in the middle of the name, they better listen. If it's all Mom three means business. things are happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Oh, thank you for joining us so much. And let me just tell people a little bit about, well, sure. how about if you switch it up? Sure. How about if you tell everybody who you are, what you do, kind of your bio, kind of let people know who you are and, and how you're showing up in the world. So um, in some ways, I've considered myself a jack of all trades holistic health practitioner. In fact, somebody recently said, well, what do, what do we call you? And, and, and my answer was like, that's actually just the easiest, those three words, holistic health practitioner. Cause it's a long yeah. list of, of certifications and, you know, courses and whatnot. All the things. Um, and I'm not a licensed healthcare provider. And so mm -hmm. it's also kind of an interesting space to, <laughs> to hang in when, um, I don't take lightly what I'm able to, to do. Right. Yeah. Uh, but but, and I've been in the holistic health community for 27 years. And, yeah. um, and I think most of us are lifers once we're here, right. But yes. I, came, I came into it, you know, I came into it early. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, and now my puppy who was sleeping is trying to crawl on my lap. So we may have a cameo appearance. That's um, okay. and, uh, so I, I literally was 20. I was 20 when I started out as a neuromuscular therapist, I learned mm -hmm. to muscle test at the age of 20. And so I, I can solidly say I've been muscle testing for 27 years, which is crazy. And, but not always really applying it like I do now, of mm -hmm. course. So I've, you know, spent 20 years as a birth and postpartum doula, childbirth educator, cranial sacral therapist, lots of health coaching inside of that, mm -hmm. um, worked at a functional medicine clinic. And, um, we just closed a year ago, um, our bricks and mortar and have been fully virtual for the past year. And which, yeah. you know, was, I didn't really even see that coming just the opportunity mm -hmm. that it was. So yeah. we've really been able to shape shift as needed. And some of that was what does mm -hmm. mom need? What, what do the kids yeah. need? How, how do we do this whole, I mean, to be honest, I remember back in the day, you know, being 26, 27, um, and my first was, you know, maybe, maybe a year old at the time, just going like this whole bodywork practice thing, mm -hmm. this is, this doesn't pay the bills. So yeah. how, how do we stop working for the hourly wage? Right. And mm -hmm. trying to have that work at the end of the week. And yeah. how do I keep doing what I love? Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so much of it just came from a guidance from my, my clientele and what they needed mm -hmm. and my interest in, in just wanting to learn more being that evergreen learner. Yes. Um, so I've been able to do some really phenomenal, really some phenomenal things. Um, I've been teaching muscle testing. We call it the method of intentional inquiry for about 14, mm -hmm. 15 months now, which is really protocols of discovery. If you will, this is, um, Love pulling it. in the going deep into the emotional and the energetic where mm -hmm. we skip out, where we miss out on things, where we run into mm -hmm. constant detours and obstacles in our muscle testing protocols with mm -hmm. um, our clients and, and patients. And when I say protocol, I don't mean like this is the one thing that everybody does and you do it for certain blocks of time. It's mm -hmm. like very bio individualized and your protocol is that which you, you know, test for is needed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and, you know, having grown a team, having had associates mm -hmm. and then not having had associates and then welcoming, you know, one in who's starting next week, having really Yay. catered to the, you know, baby mama group. Like mm -hmm. that's, you know, as a doula, that's where I came from. And mm -hmm. honestly, that's really where my practice grew out of is the growing needs of those families. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do here? And now do, what do we do here? And I remember thinking mm -hmm. like, I don't have your answer, but I know somebody who does. And I just grew my network of my mm -hmm. village of cohorts and practitioners and colleagues over the years. Um, and just feel so like so full and blessed by that group of people. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting to watch how people phase in and phase out. Yeah. 
of, of your life as a practitioner, those fellow mm-hmm. learners, those, um, you know, family that you continue to run into at conferences every year, you know, that's a, such an amazingly um, unique opportunity mm-hmm. and, and crowd to be a part of. So I have really been enjoying in the last year mentoring other practitioners. I knew Ooh, I love that. that that would be coming um, mm-hmm. as a practitioner's practitioner, you know, kind of have these two tracks, practitioner's mm-hmm. practitioner, and then very much still the mom baby crowd or the the mama family um, crowd. So, so many of, of, of the people on my table were, you know, chiropractic students. We have a chiropractic college close by. Yeah. And, and I was actually just talking to one yesterday and she was like, I can't think, I can't just like how much you have seen us through how many years I was, Mm -hmm. you know, a third trimester chiropractic student. And here I am six years out of school and own my own practice and married and with a baby and another one on the way. And it's Mm -hmm. like, wow, that's been a long time. Um, but the mentoring was even coming naturally before offering an actual mentorship within our practice, because it Mm -hmm. just, I can't, be working with you as a client and, and not be like, aha moment, like, teaching. let's talk about this. Yeah. And mm-hmm. teaching and sharing. So yeah. I really do, um, like live, live to learn, learn to live. Right. Like, and love, love it. That. all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, I love that. So if you would share a little bit about kind of your journey and how you got here, because what we're going to be talking about is at home healthcare tips and things that, because the people who are here today have Mm -hmm. experienced or are experiencing autoimmune and chronic illness, the things that just, you know, it seems sometimes, and especially when we do Dr. Google and looking at all the stuff and looking up our diagnosis, it's like, eh, it's, there's no hope of the uphill piece. And it's something that you've worked with in your practice for years and years and being Mm -hmm. able to really serve so many people. So we're going to be talking about kind of some of the most basic things that you can do and really lean into, but I'd love for folks to really understand where you came from and how you got into this work. You're, you're a lifelong learner. You've got so many tools in your tool bag. What started you on this journey? I think like most of us, you know, my, my own health, but my own health and the concern and the I'll say like the validation that something was wrong or something wasn't right. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll put it like that. Mm-hmm. The validation that something wasn't right was when I was 16 and my mom got sick. My ah. mom was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease when I was 16. I'm the got oldest it. of four kids and, ha- and already yeah. was a mother hen. And so mm-hmm. that, you know, threw me overboard and, um, and it was an awful experience, uh, you know, I've since learned it and I don't mean to make light of this, but it's sort of like, it's the cancer to get right. It's like mm. the survival rate is high, the, but as a 16 year old, I thought my mom was going to die for two years. Yeah. And within six months of that, I had an ulcer. Mm. I yes. was missing school. I was driving her to and from radiation appointments. It was like my dad and I, and a church lady, like, I, I, yeah. I mean, I said that, but she was, she was great. I remember Janet, she was fabulous, but it was like someone yeah. from church. Right. And someone from church would bring food and someone from church would mm-hmm. bring groceries. And it was so stressful, so yeah. stressful um, that when I developed that ulcer, uh, you know, a couple big things happened. I had to, I was benched on the gymnastics Mm -hmm. team. I had been a gymnast for nine years. Um, I had to stop playing in the band. I had been playing tenor and alto saxophone for six years at that point. Loved it. Was super Mm. good at it. First chair solos, you know, like stuff that I loved because like taking deep breaths and having like, I was double. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and at that point when my mom was sick, it was like the, the ulcer, you know, like a tumbleweed just sort of kept rolling and then picked up more garbage along the way. (laughs) And I just felt worse and worse and worse. And being the oldest of four kids, I already knew how to grab whoever needed to go make the appointment at the pediatrician, take them, fill their prescription, come home one for you, one for me, because amoxicillin Mm -hmm. tastes good. Right. So I had way more antibiotics than I even needed, um, more than were mine. And, um, I started to recognize really early how alone I felt Mm. and how uncared for I felt. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I would say 
maybe even 10 or 12 years ago that Mm -hmm. my mom said to me, I didn't know that you weren't being taken care of. (sighs) Like she was deep in her own Mm -hmm. healing. Right. And I was independent and probably a little Mm -hmm. bullheaded and, you know, imagine that. And doing the things, I, doing the things, getting getting them done, mm-hmm. and all all the while feeling lost and whatnot. But my parents going like, mm-hmm. she's got this, we're good. Like sh- you know, mm-hmm. surface she's level care of business. She's self yeah, yeah self serving, and so it was it was a phenomenal acknowledgement to hear that from my mom. Yeah. Um, because I remember feeling like I was on that island, and I remember you know I work, was working as a nanny at that time, and I remember my nanny moms as I would call them. They're like, "Go see my OBGYN. Like he's a specialist yeah. in yada yada. Your periods are awful. Like go see mm-hmm. my." And so it was like I had this mothering coming from mm-hmm. other areas of of my life when my mom just could couldn't, you know, yeah. and wasn't able to yeah. give that. And so as I as I marched forward, like this little tumbleweed with all the other, you know, trash Mm -hmm. attached to it, I started to notice really little things like, oh, if I drink a Dr. Pepper, I get a stomach ache. So I'm not going to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And if I eat pizza, I get a stomach ache. So I'm not going to eat pizza, spaghetti, hamburgers, like Mm -hmm. there were your Mm -hmm. basics. And, And I was a near vegetarian by the time I was 20, because so many things hurt my stomach. Mm-hmm. Now, right, hindsight being 2020, it's it's interesting to note probably the quality for sure mm-hmm. of the food I was eating, the quality of the meat I was eating. And like I said, I had these these two nanny jobs, one in particular where I was responsible for their grocery shopping and I was, you know, giving cash every week. But the difference is we we grew up going to the IGA, like you're just mm-hmm. your basic supermarket. Yeah, they shopped at the natural foods co-op and the high and the high end grocery store in town. Like I'd never, it was like a kid in a candy store walking mm-hmm. in there. So I loved shopping for them. I loved making their children lamb chops and asparagus for dinner. That's not what I was eating at home for dinner, <clears throat> you know. And the learning curves that came Excuse along me. with mm-hmm. how do you cook with natural foods? Like, yeah, like how do you soak grains? You know, there were things I was learning from this family, homeopathic remedies. I was like, what are those pellets? What are those? Were you doing that because she's throwing up like, and then she stopped, you know, it was amazing. And Mm -hmm. I literally remember like, um, it's like the, uh, you know, like the old school cash registers, they go ka-ching and then the little thing pops up. I always think that that was like, that was like information, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like ching like it went in the archive, ching it went in the archive. And, and still to this day, I'm so, so grateful for that experience that, that paralleled my, my illnesses and my Mm -hmm. discomfort and my kind of coming around to like my childhood traumas that, that had been repressed that were coming out in, you know, recurrent nightmares, Mm -hmm. um, you know, becoming aware of childhood sexual abuse, becoming aware of how these things were manifesting in my body physically, Mm -hmm. chronic UTIs, all of it. And also then by the time I was probably 20, 20, 20 or 21, I was working almost every week with an acupuncturist because I realized something about her. She got me, she got Mm -hmm. me. And when I'm with Mm -hmm. her, I'm on less antibiotics. And yeah, she was the one who planted that seed. Like, let's cut that dairy and let's, let's cut the wheat intake. And let's just start by taking it out of lunch. You know, she'd made it easy for me, small and digestible. Mm-hmm. So there were so many things along the way that the minute I was learning them, I was taking it, taking it into my nanny families for these three little people in this family and the three little people in this family and immediately applying it. So I was still a part-time nanny as I was growing my practices. So mm-hmm. as I was becoming a birth doula and teaching childbirth education and being able to like in the moment apply things, something I just learned yesterday because it yeah. made me feel better. Mm-hmm. Like I could, that's what I mean. Like teaching moments were right there from the very beginning. So, you know, like so many of us, it's like the force, it's the train that drives us. Mm-hmm. Like um, I always say when I'm teaching, like what we learn and the experiences we have in our life are not for us. Like yeah. they are to come through us. They are for those around us. And that mm-hmm. like, it's up to us to share that, um, you know, you can either expand or contract. And so exactly. when we have that happening and we have that experience, we can either choose to like mm-hmm. clam up and lock down, or we can choose to go like, I don't know who this is going to serve. 
but, exactly. and here, here we go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, along the way, like, there are favorites, you know, if I think about um, some of the questions that we get asked from client families, you know, some of the things like when you're, when you're asked the same question a hundred times a day or, you know, realistically <laughs> 35 times a day, um, you know, we have to start keeping track of these things. And yeah. the, the, the first um, thing that I would say people ask about because they, most people who are entering into our world mm-hmm. are probably not drinking tap water they're they're using a brita mm-hmm. right or they're using like an ro system a culligan you know something. water delivery mm-hmm. something like that so there's there's already this like i don't think we're supposed to drink our tap water like if we can help it so we're, you know we choose to drink this filtered water and so when we can start to educate about well <laughs> so that brita or you <laughs> know berkey like it's all better than nothing Mm -hmm. But one of the things I start to educate them on right away is distilled water. And I got to say, it took me three years to jump into that conversation. Um, And honestly, if you can get them from tap water to their, you know, delivered five gallon jugs of Culligan reverse osmosis to, you know, Mountain Valley spring water reverse osmosis, like anytime we can gently um, up the ante, Mm -hmm. right? That's mm-hmm. perfect. So for those who are ready and willing to take the steps towards distilled water, I tell them just buy a week or two's worth of the one gallon jugs. Yes, you're dealing with plastic, mm-hmm. but you're not dealing with the 110,000 other potential chemicals. And within a week or two of doing this consistently, you're going to know whether you need to take that next step forward. And right. the next step forward would be um, ease and structure. To, to like mm-hmm. to have we have kids and we have right so yes could people go right to buying a distiller and putting it in their house they could a, a you know a countertop distiller or like a something plumbed into their basement yes and a really great in between um, because people are already familiar with Culligan water deliveries and these companies um, a lot of them actually have five gallon jugs of distilled water but they're meant for like engineering industries meant mm. for that's why these companies have five gallon jugs of distilled water and that's who they market to not to folks like us who want to drink pure clean water so mm-hmm. you just have to ask those questions you know like we have a like premium water distribution here in Minneapolis so they do the same thing so if i have a local family i'm working with it's easy to kind of phase them in and some find like this is super easy and like I don't have to think about it. There's just a few jugs out on the back porch. I don't mind it at all. I just change it out 50 bucks a month, whatever it is. They're like, I don't have to think Mm -hmm. anything. I don't have to deal with plumbing, right? So you just kind of find that gradient into where you feel the most comfortable and, and, you know, implement that. Um, When it comes to cleaning up the air, I think, um, first of all, I think heavily, heavily cleaning our homes is overrated. (laughs) I tell people like (laughs) my home is tidy and organized. It is not hasn't had a deep clean in a while. Um, <laughs> but what, what uh-huh. I mean by that is um, dusting mm-hmm. is is what gets my attention. For people who are dealing with mold, mm-hmm. dusting is one of those things to to stay on top of, like vacuum and dust. You can leave the windows, mm-hmm. you, can, you know what I mean? In the world of like, how much time do I have? How much energy do I have? Mm-hmm. And just yeah. like, what do I need to check the boxes on, right? We clean our windows because people like nice, shiny windows, but ultimately what helps the air we breathe is that vacuuming and dusting. And Mm -hmm. then I'm a big Air Doctor fan. I don't have an affiliate account with Air Doctor, um, but I love it. It's made a big difference. And um, what I have found with like smaller ionizing, um, uh, ionizing air filters Mm -hmm. is... Mm-hmm. particularly if it's, if you're a family who diffuses essential oils, mm-hmm. it sort of adheres the essential oils that you're diffusing, like onto your furniture and your personal Ooh. items and can be really tricky for people who are respiratory. Mm-hmm. Now also don't get me wrong because in our at home healthcare manual, I've got lots of ways to use essential oils and I love to diffuse them, but we have cut that down to maybe once or twice a month. Mm-hmm. tops diffusing simply because I didn't see that connection to 
the waking asthmatic attacks of our little guy in the four years that he didn't sleep Mm -hmm. after he was Mm -hmm. born um you know blaming mold and parasites for sure that was a problem um based on what we saw once we started treating that right like that was a problem Mm -hmm. um but but what did we have going in his room every stinking night yeah from like the day he was born Mm -hmm. a diffuser yeah crazy yeah just crazy to me like so those humidifiers that we grew up with, a way better option even because some people truly can't tolerate that the inhalation of these oils. So that's that's yeah. kind of another thing to um, to consider. And then another favorite is is I, like I literally crack up at this. So you know if you go to the drugstore to you stop like so let's say making vision boards right. I'm like I need to go buy like nine magazines to to tear up and you know create a vision board. So go to the local drugstore. And then I kind of laugh because it's like the only reason I go to the local drugstore or maybe to pick up like photographs that I had printed or something like that. But when I think about why people go to their local drugstore, it's because they're hitting up the pharmacy. Yeah. They're waiting to pick up a medication, write a prescription from their, their doctor. And while they're waiting in line to pick up this prescription and they're sort of mindlessly wandering the aisles and looking at this time of year, all the Halloween candy or whatever the holiday happens to be, there's going to be yeah. aisles and aisles of candy out. Um, and then your band-aids and then your makeup and then your, maybe your feminine hygiene products. And then there's like four aisles of stuff that we sort of disregard having any need for and put it as like the old people aisle. And I say that I have an incredible love for the elderly. Like I've got this um, beginning of life and end of life, like a love and have spent a lot of time, a lot of years working on, on um, working, you know, with both of those communities. And um, when I worked with the elderly, that was in more like um, home health care or assisted living where, where these things weren't their walkers or their commodes, things like that. But it didn't occur to me, you could pick those up at a local, at a local, like, drugstore, a CVS or mm-hmm. Walgreens or something. Mm-hmm. So, but here's the deal. If you walk those aisles, there are so many at-home healthcare tools that are under like 50 bucks, under 35, even under 20 bucks that we don't know are there. We don't, if we don't know they're there, we're not looking for them. So we don't know mm-hmm. that they're beneficial. We don't know how to use them right? We're like, we want to hide it if our neighbor comes over because of the weird one with the thing that's for old people from the drugstore, right? <laughs> and one of my favorite things is, um, you know, it can be hard sometimes to find a coffee enema kit at a drugstore, but they have them. Mm-hmm. So coffee enemas, like people love to go to get colonics. Mm-hmm. Well, love, hate maybe, but it's like, you are having someone else put a tube up your hind end to clean you out to the tune of at least 75 to $85 for that mm-hmm. probably one hour session when you could buy for about $45, a coffee enema kit, some good organic coffee. I just use our organ or the organo King tear off, like mm-hmm. pour over yeah. super easy. I make it in the morning, put it in a, <sighs> you know, a uh, Mason jar, a quart size Mason jar put a lid on it. And then I grab it in the evening after the kids have gone to bed and I'm ready to use it. There's no like having mm-hmm. to cool it in the fridge, like super simple. And then that time is to myself. No one else has to put a tube in my hinder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, one of my favorite things is when I put a coffee enema program, I put a coffee enema on any of my clients programs, it'll sit there like unchecked for like the next <laughs> three visits. Right. And yes. then I'll be like, so did you, were you going to start? Oh yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got everything ordered and, and it's, and it's sitting in my bathroom. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so <laughs> by the next visit. Right. And so what I started telling people is like, I get it. How, how awkward we make it. And it's just us in the bathroom. And so mm-hmm. I was like, it's awkward when we think it's like me, myself and I, mm-hmm. cause that's three. Right. I was like, yep. you're not three of you in the bathroom. It's just it's you. Just so what? Like, me and myself go out the door, just one, nobody else in the bathroom, <laughs> get over it. Like it's only mm-hmm. awkward for the first time or two to be like, where do I lay and how do I sit and do this? You know, yeah. Yeah. And I think we overcomplicate a lot of things too. You know, mm-hmm. people have these like 
yoga mats and layers of towels and one of those like back cushions in their bathtub. And I am like, there is no way in hell I'm going to try to camp out in my bathtub (laughs) while I'm doing a coffee enema because I will have a problem trying to climb out of that tub in time to release on the toilet. I know this about Mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to do that. So it's a (laughs) yoga mat on the floor and a towel on top of the yoga mat. And then mm-hmm. I fold up a towel on my squatty potty and that becomes where I rest my head and mm-hmm. we get it done, right? Do your thing. Yeah. Do my thing. Um, and another thing that makes it easy with coffee enemas outside of using like an organic, really quick pour over coffee. So you're not mm-hmm. like brewing and waiting and cooling and heating and yada, yada is make sure you buy a coffee enema kit that has like a clear you can, you can buy glass. I would, it would break in my house if I had a glass bowl or pitcher. Um, but I like the clear silicone bags, clearish, yeah. the slightly colored, right? But here's the deal is you're lying on the floor and you're looking up at this stainless steel bucket and you feel like you've got nine cups of water in your colon mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, you know, then you're like, try to hobble up and peek in to see that you still have this much coffee to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, right it's disheartening and it's harder to manage. And, mm-hmm. and I would find like, I would no pun intended, like spill over on my time. It would take me more mm-hmm. than an hour to, and I'm like, you're in and out of there in an hour, like get it yeah. done. So, um, so we broke down simple steps to doing that. I just think a lot of health gets like overcomplicated. And if we just, just mm-hmm. like step one, step make two, step simple. three, make it simple. Yeah. Um, and then the other is like, is a nebulizer, which, you know, during yeah. the pandemic, I watched them go from 30 to $35 on Amazon and in the drugstores up to like even 55 or $60 for a, mm-hmm. a small, you know, um, travel sized handheld nebulizer. And I mean, at the bare minimum, nebulizing just distilled water when yeah. you feel something coming on or even just once or twice a week as just a little bit of a preventive to just kind of be flushing uh, breathing and drop and like, you know, you just drip, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I know I just drip mm-hmm. when I do with the nebulizer. Um, and you can get kids to do that. You yeah. can like, they'll hold it. Do not strap it to their head. Do not hold the mask on their mm-hmm. face. Like keep it light, keep it simple. Um, and my way around that is, you know, unfortunately most kids are somewhat connected to some kind of device or iPad these days. Um, our our way around this was to put like flipper some old like black and white you know mm-hmm. leave it to beaver like some something um on on the tv and we would we would set a stack of books on a table so that the nebulizer just sat right here and we we put the stack of books level to if he just sat a few inches away from it then he's just he's getting this um mm-hmm and we don't have to strap it in. It's not scary. And then he resists yeah. it and hates us and doesn't want to do it. Um, yeah. and he doesn't care cause he's watching flipper. Right. Yeah. So, so you can, I always say like bribery is appropriate, when it's appropriate right? <laughs> in some areas, <laughs> some areas of life. There um, are times, <laughs> there are times there. Yeah. Yes. Choose your battles. Right. Yeah. Um, so I love the nebulizer. And then I also love like a nasal rinse or a nasal mm-hmm. navage, those are very easy to pick up. Some of them look like um, the size of like an electric toothbrush. And those would mm-hmm. also be ones that you could use for travel if you know that you're you know, really sensitive to mold or really sensitive to chemicals in hotels, things like that. Yeah. It's a really easy thing to, to travel with. And if you just have a smaller space and you don't want something big and wonky, it's again, Perfect. 30 bucks maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you yeah. can get savvy and go beyond distilled water you can use you know mm-hmm. food grade hydrogen peroxide a little bit of that in there um and some people you know will use different solutions based on products from companies that they're comfortable with we do drop a few of those ideas um mm-hmm. if you're like i want to take my coffee enema up a notch or you know i want to take the nebulizer up a notch or i want to take the sinus rinsing up a notch how how would we do that and um but my real favorite is the the navage Mm, and I mm-hmm. love the nasal navage because of the, the kind of the catch and carry, I call it the mm-hmm. big, you know, container at the bottom. Yeah. So most people will say like, oh, you mean a neti pot when I'm talking about nasal mm-hmm. rinse. And it's like, yeah. no, I mean, there's, there's like more force, um, mm-hmm. but you can buy, and just back to the nasal rinse for a second, 
you know, you can buy them where they're electric and it's pushing, you know, mm-hmm. out and through, but you can buy some that you can, this is what I prefer for kids, um, that they get to be in charge of and they can squeeze it. Ah, so they I've never seen know, that kind. Yeah. They, Amazon, mm. they know when it's coming because they're in control mm-hmm. of it. Yep. Um, and honestly, you know, and I've had this, these moments, even with, with our little one where, cause I'll say like, it feels funny. And it kind of feels like when you jump in the lake and you forget to blow the bubbles out your nose, like you can sometimes mm-hmm. get a little bit of a headache, but, but that feeling is a sign of that at our house, when the littles, we call them buggies. So there, there are some buggies there that need to come out. And mm-hmm. so he could roll mm-hmm. with that conversation. I may have needed to use bribery for nasal rinsing. Um, but he preferred this one where he had control Mm -hmm. over the one where he held and there was just like force applied. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you get to the nasal navage, it's, it's a, it's a bigger contraption. You're holding Mm -hmm. the thing that's like this Mm -hmm. and half of it is, um, is where the, is the water catch. And so people really like that because once they're done rinsing, they can Mm -hmm. hold it up to a light, you know, on their, above their, you know bathroom sink or whatever and they're like oh wow that's that's what came out (laughs) what came out like that's what was up there that's that's crazy and it Mm -hmm. grosses some people out and some are like hand me a microscope I want I want to see what this is but those are easy and Mm -hmm. everybody has access to them and the world Mm -hmm. behaves like we shouldn't and and don't and it's like a secret and it's just silly Mm -hmm. to me Mm -hmm. so finding um finding ways to access the things that are already around you. Mm -hmm. Like just put your feet in a little bucket with, you know, a cup of Epsom salts and some essential oils and like, wow, you know, that really can take people far. You don't necessarily Mm -hmm. have to buy a big fancy ion cleanse at home foot bath. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a phenomenal tool to have in your pocket if you need it? Yes. yes. I always say if you've yeah. got more than one special needs or higher needs um, in the health realm in your household, then more of like an ion cleanse foot bath is it's definitely worth its investment in, you know, the, the ROI yeah. on it in your household is huge. Um, but we use binder baths a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, we use them as sort of like a sits bath. Um, mm-hmm. Lots of women right now post jab are experiencing high levels of inflammation in yes. the nether regions and the mucous mm-hmm. membranes and lots mm-hmm. of pain, itching and burning and uh, lots of being treated for yeast infections that are not in fact not. Yes. fungal or yeast in any way. And so mm-hmm. like having yeah. these, having these things, having supplements on hand. So when you can say weird, so I heard that you could take a para one and take the whole capsule unopened and just sort of tuck it into the side of the lady parts and Mm -hmm. watch it take the skinning and the itching and the burning away like instantly. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so the writing of this really came from if I wasn't a practitioner and I was the girl across the street, what would I want to know? Right. And these aren't like, prescription oriented these are Mm -hmm. like you can pick these things up these are the conversations that happen at the bus stop you know and where you're like have you tried did you know did you see that tiktok it's like if there weren't tiktok (laughs) we would just be sharing this information with each other right and so I just wanted to put it into something that it's pretty to look at it's easy to use um we do about one revision a year on it so we we you know are always updating Keep it, it. Up to date yeah um and and i'm always taking into consideration just like ideas because a lot mm-hmm. of this a lot of the tweaking of some of these ideas comes just by way of intuition working with clients mm-hmm. where it's like i don't know why yeah. you should do this but you might but try you this should. and let me know how it goes. Yes. <laughs> right. right? Um, I'm happy to try it as well. I just don't have the same issue you have going on right now. Um, yeah. And then there are lots of, lots of gadgets, you know, you can, you can buy gadgets, you can buy the mm-hmm. Therisage heating pads and you can buy the cold plunge pools and you can buy the, like, there's yeah. no end. There's no end. Frequency healing devices, all the things. And so if you find things that float your fancy, mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. When you go to invest in a purchase like that, think more than one person in your family. Mm-hmm. 
as moms, we're often like, we think for our kids before we think for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if Jack, you know, is your asthmatic and you're like, wow, Mm -hmm. with this nebulizer, but you know, I don't know if we have the extra $65 this month to buy one. Mm -hmm. Well, like which between you and your husband, which one had bronchitis every year when they were growing up? Like, oh, so which one has a sinus infection every spring and fall with Mm -hmm. allergy, right? So when you can start to go like, how much does that doctor's visit copay cost? And how many members of your family are you going to take between now and, you know, the holidays? Yeah. Here is your $65. So Mm -hmm. it can be hard to think that way and, and like reprioritize, which is so hard because it's like, we all have our own finances to deal with and we know our families do too. Mm -hmm. Um, I just really try to empower our families with the conversation of societally moms are not set up to critically think about their health Mm -hmm. and the health of their children. Mm -hmm. we are taught to go to a doctor have done to us people tell us what to do what to apply and where um not when we should come back not what we should look for in terms of i call them glimmers like if people do Mm -hmm. not know to look for the glimmers of hope and what that might Mm -hmm. feel like and sound like and land like and look like Mm -hmm. um when they're watching this and their kids they're gonna miss it and then they're gonna be stuck in their story of nothing changes, nothing works. Mm, This was a waste of money. Our doctor doesn't listen. It never helps us, but he's my only guy or she's my only guy. And so I have to go back there. Right. So that was really the goal was how can we shift this conversation to literally building a toolkit at home for each of our clients such that they don't need me Mm -hmm. such that six to nine months into their membership or program, I'm not the first one they think of sending the email or the DM to us is not the first Mm -hmm. step. It's like, wait a second. So last time he woke up with this cough, we did this this thing or Mm -hmm. this rub on the chest or this tapping, this pair of spinals Mm -hmm. up and down the back and, and it worked. And so I'm going to try these three things because now I'm empowered. I'm educated. I have something Mm -hmm. to pull from. Yep. And there are tools in there for managing our own anxiety as moms, because that's half the problem. Yeah right? Like if we're gone, they go with us, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like managing our own fear and our expectations and not like squeezing it out of us, out of our sponge and onto Mm. them for them to sponge Mm -hmm. up. So if we're doling out some sort of anxiety support, Bach flower rescue remedy to the kids, you take that shot first. Yeah. Yeah. Then turn around after you've taken that breath and go to take care of your family because you will come to it grounded. Your intuition will be like wide open and you can mm-hmm. listen to it because you're yeah. not swirling, right? Yeah. I can go on and on, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> I love this though. This is brilliant. So just so you know, everybody else, the what she's talking about is the at-home healthcare guide that she's created and is giving to us as a gift and giving to you as a gift. And so when we are sending out, as we send out this recording and send it to all of you, you'll have the link to be able to go in and get this really amazing at-home healthcare guide. I love it. I did not know it was so comprehensive. This is fabulous. Oh my mm-hmm. goodness. I mm-hmm. wish I would have had this when my kids were little. Yeah. I even oh include, my goodness. like my favorite books that I mm-hmm. have turned to both as a mom and as a, as a practitioner. Cause even though we're practitioners, it's like half the time, the practitioner stuff doesn't work when we're using, when we're like yeah. working with our own kids. <laughs> And so there are books that are literally like my guides and granted yeah. we can Google anything these days, but then we're yeah. kind of down a rabbit hole and we don't know how to get yeah. back. And there are a few books that to this day are still on my bookshelf at home that I share in that guide because the perspectives are really juicy, the clarity about what you're looking mm, for and how to identify love it. like the support for your particular child and how mm-hmm. their energy is showing up is like worth its weight in gold. And again, then you grow as a mom. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love how empowering this conversation has been to everybody that's been listening. Thank you. Oh, I love This is such a fun. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, yeah. So much more to add. Yeah. I know, right? (laughs) 
Oh, so thank you so much for joining us. I oh, appreciate gosh, it. Welcome. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Yes. So for each one of you that are listening, be sure to pop in and get her guide. It's going to be awesome. I'm getting it too. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. So have an amazing rest of your day and thank you again. Yeah, thank you.